Hello, my name is Goran Stanković, and I wish you very warm welcome to Bifurcation Module 5, Double Kissing Crush, how to select and what are the indications. DK Crush is one of the most popular bifurcation stenting techniques recently after the outstanding results of DK Crush 5 and Definition 2 trial. However, the complexity of this technique continues to pose specific challenges and high volume DK Crush operators continue to develop technical refinements with potential addition of further steps. That's why we selected fantastic faculty to try to discuss and to understand when double kissing crush technique could be used for left main stenting and other complex non-left main lesions, to learn contemporary step-by-step -step procedural guide for DK crush, but of course to discuss, identify, and try to prevent potential complications. To discuss this, we have great faculty, and I thank you very much, and I'm very proud to present Beatrice Vakerizo from Spain, Prof. Maciej Lesiak from Poznan, Poland, and the inventor of Double Kissing Crush, Shaoliang Chen, who will serve as our super expert and good colleague and friend. We will start with presentation of the most contemporary today's double kissing crush, and I invite Professor Chen to present his way of doing DK crush. Prof Chen, floor is yours. Well, thank you very much. Uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Goransen and Kovici. So from the beginning of DK crush, you say we need to wire both vessels, then side branch and then another balloon in the main vessel. So immediate, immediately after standing side branch, can you stop here? Pause. Yeah. Pause. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, pause. Can you backward? Can you backward a little bit? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, once again. So wire two vessels and stand inside branch, another balloon in the main vessel. So in flash, in flat, side stand. Yeah, pause, please, pause. Yeah, right. So you can see immediate, immediate, immediately after side side branch. So usually, you, you know, if the side stand is not too long, we can a little bit pull back the stand balloon to uh, fully expand the side stand. However, if the side stand is pretty long, so we need to use another non-compliant balloon to post that uh, osteo side branch to make sure the side stand was well opposed. Move on, please. Okay. So after the post dilation of side stand, so we will inflate the main vessel balloon. Yeah, can you pause? Pause, please. Okay. Because you know the main vessel balloon size is adjusted, is adjusted according to the a distal vessel diameter, it could be a little bit small for the proximal main vessel. So this is the reason why we need another short balloon to, to, to completely crush the side stand protruded into the main vessel. Please move on. Okay, after balloon crush, we need to rewire the side. So always we need to rewire the side branch from the proximal cell. So after first kissing balloon inflation, standing in main vessel, and once again, post dilate. After that, this is the first part. Then rewire side again from the proximal cell. I think this is the final part. So what I wanted to say during kissing balloon inflation, we always need to 
it shortened the overlapping length of two balloons in the main vessel, move on. Okay, so after final part from different view, you can see two stain in either side branch and main vessel where you spend it very well. Thank you, Gorad. I think I have finished the presentation yeah. of my video. Shaolian, thank you so much. If I can try to summarize, if I understood all your recent refinements, so the first refinement, after deploying stent in the side branch, you post-dilate the ostium. You do optimization of the side branch osteal expansion. So this is novelty number one. Second, when you crush, you do actually sequential crush. First crush is performed with balloons sized according to distal main vessel diameter. And then you take short balloon like pot. So you are using two balloons to optimally crush the stand, and Machie will show some bench testing imaging also to document the advantages. And after that, if you do kissing, you do short proximal overlap, and you finish procedure with pot. So more or less, you are really improving all the steps which should ensure optimal expansion at the ostium of the side branch, minimal length of the three diameters of the stand in the proximal main vessel. Uh, let's see how it looks in the clinical practice. Bea, can you please share your case with us? Yes, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Good morning. I'm going to present my case. This is a seven, seven, 85 years old male with an active life. The risk factors were hypertension, dyslipidemia. The patient had chronic kidney disease with a clearance, a creatinine clearance on 34. And that patient in 2005 had a carriage with a lima to LAD and saphenous vein graft to right coronary artery. And the patient was admitted to a hospital one year ago because of refractory angina and the left ventricular ejection fraction was 45. Here you can see the angel. In the left side of the screen, you have a, a spider view. There is a big circumflex. On the right of the, the screen, there is a, is a cranial view. And you can see that there is a true bifurcation lesion. And you cannot see very well the distal part of the LED because the two uh, saphenous vein graft and the lima were not functional. So this is the, the anatomy without bypasses functioning. So when you see in detail the left main bifurcation lesion, I think uh, in my personal opinion, in favor to two stands in this case, that is a true bifurcation lesion, the side branch that is the circumflex, there is, is a big bezel, there is a big territory, and also there is the diffuse and long disease, and other that to me are important, the angulation. In that case, the angulation is open. There is a moderate severe calcification that we, we will see uh, after by IBUS, and also there is a big uh, plaque burden in the main branch in the proximal osteal LAD, and also there is a diffuse and severe disease in the side branch. So to me, is a, is a nice case for two stand technique from the beginning. I don't know, uh, what do you think, uh, colleagues? Yeah, Machi, would you consider a plan to stand strategy up front, or you have different perspective? Yeah, I think uh, what we see here, especially on the still frame, that there is a diffuse disease in the cirque. So I think that uh, uh, two stand technique uh, is uh, is correct. Uh, of course, you you could start with uh, inverted provisional, for example, uh, and then decide. But uh, I think starting upfront with two stand technique is is, is a good thing. Yeah, is, is 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 right here. So I would do like that. Yeah, thanks. I think I share completely. In my view, again, inverted provisional, as you said, maybe will be the first option. But uh, Prof Chen, do you think that DK crash is uh, uh, 
uh, optimal indication for this kind of left main anatomy? Actually, this uh, patient is uh, at a very high risk. And, and anatomically, so this left main lesion looks like a complex. Uh, of course, we still have another, another uh, space for provisional standing technique. Basically, you know, baseline diameter stenosis at the osteosynclass, it looks mild to moderate. Okay, but yeah. two stand technique, I think, is yeah. also perfect. Thanks. Let's see where, step by step, how DK crash was done. Okay. Firstly, after I decide that it's to a stand technique, you can choose another uh, to a stand technique, the culotte or the crash. To me, this case is nice for the crash because it's left main. We have some evidence favorably to this technique. And also to me, the most important is the mismatch. The mismatch between the sign branch and the main branch. Because you can see here, the left main is really big and the distal left circumflex is relatively small. So to me, this is a nice case for Dika crash. So I start in predilated all LED distal from proximal with a small balloon. I usually do that. I start predilating LED and then uh, left circumflex and after, because I use a small balloons before to use IBUS because I think for left main it's really important to use IBUS. Yeah, this is also the answer we received, started receiving question. Usha Rao says, would you do IVUS for the ostium of the circ? You definitely did. And he says, because of the wide angle, maybe top. But we already discussed that there is variety of options, and you should select one that you are most familiar. You also have greetings from Francesco Lavara, who actually proposed a TBC meeting a few years ago, proximal side optimization. And we are happy it's already part of our EBC Consensus 2020. So keep asking questions. Bea, please, uh, what you learn from IBUS? You can see here, this is the IBUS from left circumflex to left main. You can see, to me, I used the IBUS before, uh, first, to see the real diameters of the distal vessels and the diameter of the left main to decide which is the best strategy and also to see the calcification. So you can see here the distal diameter of less circumflex is around 2.5, 2.8. And you can see the osteal less circumflex, there is a quite moderate to severe calcification. You can see also the distal left main, there is calcification, but not too much. And you can see that the left main is around 4.5 millimeters. So you can see left main and you can see distal circumflex. I did the same from LAD. You can see the, dist the mid LAD was around three millimeters and you can see the distal LAD was diffuse disease. So I didn't take care of the distal LAD and osteal LAD, there, there was fibrocalcified lesion. There is no severe calcification. Yeah, there is a question from Cyan. Do you want to consider stenting from the osteum of the left main uh, based on IBUS? What was your decision? My decision was not, uh, the IVUS was not really disease from the osteal uh, left main, so I okay. didn't cover everything. And also sometimes it's difficult to make just uh, left main, so sometimes give me some problems. Okay. Okay, please proceed, next. So we predilated first with cutting balloon. In my center, we use a lot of cutting balloon for fibrocalcified lesions. So we started 2.5 cutting balloon and then no compliant balloon uh, to less circumflex and also LAD. So here you can see in the, in the left side of the screen, the, the stand, there is the drag looting stand, 2.5, 30 millimeters, uh, is positioned in the left circumflex, and I have a non-compliant balloon, 3.015 to LAD to left main. You can see in the right part of the screen that there is a, the crash. I removed the balloon of the stand after implantation from the left circumflex. Then I crash the stand 
with the balloon I had placed in the left main LED and I request wires and I did a kissing balloon with two non-compliant balloons, 2.515 to less circumflex and 3.015 to left main LED. Okay. This is the results after crashing and first kissing balloon. So then I implant the second stand and drag looting stand 3.038 millimeters from left main to LED. Then I did pot with a no compliant balloon four millimeters to eight. Then I recross wires and I did the second kissing balloon with a no compliant balloon 2.515 to less circumflex and 3.015 to LED. And I finished with a second pot. And here you can see the final result in a caudal view and a spider view. Yeah, so it's this is really, the final result. Yeah, it's really uh, beautiful. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Actually, our colleagues are sending questions. Uh, Giuseppe Ando is asking, uh, does the ring of calcium in osteal circumflex require special preparation such as cutting balloon or shockwave? You use cutting balloon and uh, balloon fully open, so there was no need to use, uh, uh, to use uh, shockwave. Uh, and I, I would, would like also to ask Machie, uh, Machie, would you consider shockwave in some of the uh, cases based on IVUS only, or for left main, you think that uh, there is difference in indication for uh, intravascular lithotripsy compared to other calcified lesions? Yeah, based on IVUS, uh, we can very often observe that the lumen is uh, large enough to get the balloon very easy uh, and even too big for rotational thorectomy because then you would have to use uh, the, the large burr. And what's more, when you use IVUS, you very often see that the calcium is very deep in the tissue. So you will do nothing yeah. with, uh, with uh, rotational thorectomy. So actually, we use more and more uh, shockwave balloon, especially for the left main. And... Uh, you can you can believe me that it's it's uh, not only easy but also patient tolerate uh, this few seconds of uh, shockwaves very well. So uh, I think that's the great tool for left main calcified ring uh, as well. Yeah. Yeah. One question I think that all three of you could discuss and give opinion. Uh, Michael Gergis is asking. I usually do crash while keeping the wire in the side branch to facilitate recrossing, uh, and. Uh, uh, Darigo is asking, is it always mandatory to remove side branch wire before the second stand? Uh, Bea, what is your practice? This is your case. Uh, would you consider leaving side branch wire or you routinely remove it? I routinely remove it, but it's true that sometimes I forgot. So in my case, uh, never happened anything wrong but I think it is important and recommended to remove because if not, you can crash between two layers of a stand. So maybe you damage that wire and if you want to reuse that wire, it's, it's quite complex. But I never crash a wire because of that, but maybe yeah. you have more experience, but um, I routinely remove in general. Yeah, Machi, what is your uh, uh, strategy? Uh, uh, leaving the wire uh, is useful. So I don't need this wire. So I completely agree with, with Bea that if I don't forget and I try, I really think about this. Uh, I never leave uh, a wire, neither during uh, crushing nor during implantation of the of the of the second step. Uh, Shaoliang, what is your personal perspective? Would you leave wire in the side branch or you remove it? Yeah, before standing my vessel, usually I do not remove side wire. I think it's a very important. It could serve as a roadmap to guide the rewiring into the side. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Shaoliang. Uh, two clinical questions. Uh, first one is, uh, would you consider using Impella? I don't think this was uh, really the case that... Uh, in, in our regular practice, we would consider 
uh, use of Impella. Uh, did you have that dilemma, Bea, when you consider this case for PCI? I, I left uh, for uh, introduction in the left uh, femoral because of, of if in, in case, because the patient has a, a right coronary artery CTO and yeah. was the left main, and maybe we had some complications, but not for the beginning, but I have a plan B in case. Yeah, that's, I that's think excellent. If the fraction were like uh, 25 or less than 30, then it would be very reasonable to, to have yes. the in place uh, because of the complexity of the lesion. Otherwise, mm -hmm. this was for, I guess, uh, in, in, in this patient. So uh, perhaps it's uh, really done, not needed. Yeah. Uh, again, question, would you recommend post-dilating proximal part of the cyber stent after deployment before first crash? Operators believe it facilitates recrossing. Shaoli and Chen, I think this is a good question for you. Uh, side branch optimization I saw in Nanjing is a regular part of DK crash these days. Uh, does it really help recrossing into the stand? Yeah, I think it's a very important, you know, a proximal optimization of the side stand before balloon crash. The reason is that, you know, for a for some large side branches, also there are some small side branches taken from the side branch. So it means the side stand size is adjusted according to the distal vessel. It could be small than the ostium of side stand. So I think this is the first reason. Same thing there, if we do not optimize the side, side ostium, so probably yeah. there will be a large, large gap between straw and the vessel wall. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Bea, there is a question regarding lesion preparation. Uh, main difference is would you use uh, cutting or scoring, or you use some cases OPN, or you go straight to lithotripsy? What is the cascade of decision making in your lab, in your practice? We are a, a cutting balloon uh, center, so we have a lot of experience using cutting balloon at high pressure. So we're starting, uh, in these cases, when you see fibrocalcified lesions, if we feel really severe calcification, maybe I go with a uh, lithotripsy. But in these cases, if I see that the cutting balloon is open well, I don't have any doubt that the stent is going to open and also, now the balloon is, is, uh, is quite nice, but in the past, if the cutting balloon crossed the lesions, you always cross the stand. So to me, these two skis are really important because the, the cutting balloon is not well navigated in the past. Now it's really good. So, but to me, if the cutting balloon is open well, I use around 0 0.8 8 to 1 comparing to the, the real vessel size. So to me, cutting balloon gives me a lot of uh, information uh, answering the, 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 the quality of the plaque. Yeah, thanks. Uh, two questions regarding the, uh, the maybe uh, later intervention on diagonal. Uh, uh, Dr. Hashim Soaida is asking, is it considered any intervention in diagonal afterwards? And again, Bogdan Sarkisian, also, what about diagonal? Seems a very disease as well. Uh, would you consider uh, that one as part of the uh, exercise testing and then decision like uh, in stable chronic coronary syndrome? What is your plan with diagonal? In that case, with a patient with uh, 85 years old and the, the left ventricular function was quite good, uh, the objective was remove the refractory angina so in that case, we don't think for about this diagonal branch. Maybe if the patient continues with symptoms, we, we exactly. try to, to treat. But in that case, because of the age of the patient and because of the function of the left ventricular, I think we'll be improving during after this uh, procedure. We don't take care at this moment from the diagonal branch. Yeah, so clinical decision made, making and, of course, according also to ischemia study, uh, we know that uh, the, this kind of plan strategy is very appropriate. Uh, any final words, Machie, for the case uh, of Beatrice Vaccherizo? 
Yeah, I, I really like the case, and uh, Beatrice was brave enough to to do this complex technique, even though the, those uh, large diagonal branch. Because when I was thinking of uh, inverted provisional, mainly because of this diagonal branch, because if you succeed, then you you wouldn't have to cover this uh, takeoff of this this large diagonal ostium. But you did it perfectly, and the result was great. And I think this uh, gentleman. Uh, will have benefits uh, uh, of this uh, procedure. So I can only congratulate. Thank you. Uh, final words from our super expert, uh, DK Crash super expert, Professor Chen. Shao Liang, what do you think? Any criticism, suggestions for improvement? Uh, first of all, congratulations on my friends to perform this DK quad in such a perfect and beautiful way. It just a few, few comments about the procedure. Firstly, as I said in my video, so the proxim osteocyte branch optimization is very important, particularly if the size stand is longer than 12 or 15 millimeters. The second thing is that I need to address the computer quash because the left man looks very big. So three, three or three, five balloon is smaller than the proxim left man. So I recommend to use a large non-compliant balloon to do complete quash. Also this large balloon, it could be used as a part technique. So from cost effective point, so it does not mean the, the vest of too much money. The third thing that, because you know, if I decree, describe my latest version video, but it's not final version. So uh, I also uh, uh, neglect some key points. For example, the, for kissing balloon inflation, I always address the importance of alternative inflation study from side branch inflated by at least uh, 16 atmosphere uh, followed by a dilat a main vessel stand and finally key kissing inflation. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Shao Liang, I keep receiving questions here. Dr. Hassan Kadim and many others are asking what is the optimal protrusion of the side branch stand inside the main vessel? How short we should protrude inside? One, two, three millimeters more? Uh, thank you. I think it's a great question. Usually, you know, the protrusion is around two millimeters. I think for any intervention cardi cardiologist who cannot make sure the one millimeter protrusion is a, 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 is, a, a, is possible for some bifurcant with the, with the type Y angle. So the, if the protrusion is too short, probably there will be geographic miss at the ostomer side. A, that's the answer. Did you Thank did you. you try, Goran? We should stress that it's uh, much better to protrude too much than to miss the ostium. Uh, yeah. So if you want to stay on the safe side, just go two three millimeters. Even it doesn't make many uh, big yeah. difference. Uh, so otherwise, you miss the ostium or check in the orthogonal projection because it happened to me as well, and then the result is awful. Yeah. So this is already the answer to my next question. What do you think about nano crash? Nano crash means <laughs> one millimeter protrusion. Yeah. Uh, is there any uh, trial evidence for side branch optimization prior to crash? I think it's a decision based on the experience. We don't have really trial, uh, but makes a lot of sense that fully expanded stent at the ostium of the side branch will really help us recrossing easier because it opens much better the, the cell in front of the osteo. Uh, final comments, uh, again, double kissing culotte versus double kissing crush. Uh, why decay crush if both culotte and crush cover everything? Uh, Shao Liang, that's question for you. Uh, should decay crush be better than decay culotte in left main? And why? Yeah, I, I think so. DK quash should be much better than DK culotte. You know, basically before DK quash three study, you know, in that study we designed the DK mini culotte standing technique. It means mini protrusion of side stand and the 
double kissing. But you know, the question is that so some some procedures could be transferred to Cassie Quash because you know we tried to negotiate the main vessel from this cell. If the protrusion is too short, it's impossible. So I think this is the first question problem for decaminate culot. The same question is about the re re-establishment of new crime between main vessel side. So this is a common problem for any kind of culot. So you know from our DK Quachi 3 study, very high rate of stent thrombosis at three or five years follow up. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. One question for you. I know that every DK crash in your hospital is IVUS guided. And Dr. Bazal is asking, what is your standard to decide stand diameter, um, uh, MME or luminal area? So, vessel yeah, actually, or lumen? I think, you, you know, we have both the uh, two ways. So, according to the lumen diameter or, or media to media. So, if we measure media to media, so, for example, if the media to media diameter is a three, three millimeters, so the stand size could be 2.75 millimeters. So if okay. we measure lumen di diameter, the stand size ratio should be one to one. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. This was excellent warm up. Uh, now we go to second case. Uh, Machi, floor is yours. Please share your case. Thank you, Goran. Uh, so, okay, so Go ahead, please uh, show. Please show my present my first uh, first slide. Yeah. So this is a 64 year old uh, male patient, uh, very active uh, with normal cognitive function, uh, with couple of risk factors factors like hypertension and diabetes uh, type two, and uh, quite uh, a robust uh, medical history. Non ST elevation MI in 2006, then STEMI in 2014, treated with um, right coronary uh, PCI. Uh, the same year, uh, PCI of CERC and Optus Marginal. And finally, actually, I don't know why he landed up on the table of surgeons with um, Lima to LAD implantation. Uh, okay, so uh, go ahead, please. Next slide. Uh, he was very symptomatic on admission, class 3 angina, uh, sinus rhythm, uh, and uh, the presence of Q waves in inferior leads, uh, and quite good uh, ejection fraction of uh, 55%. Uh, so that's, that's the anatomy. Uh, you can appreciate the long diffuse disease uh, in the LAD and diagonal branch, but also the, at the ostium of the LAD, there is uh, some stenosis. So uh, perhaps uh, on a still frames, uh, you can appreciate that uh, anatomy is really complex because there is a single very large diagonal, uh, which is significantly disease uh, and, a, and a quite long stretch, more than uh, 15 millimeters, I guess, then very diffusely disease uh, LAD, and at the ostium of the uh, of the uh, LAD close to the left main, uh, there is uh, a significant stenosis of LAD. What is uh, very important? Uh, Lima was found uh, functionally uh, occluded, so we decided to treat this patient uh, with uh, intervention. Uh, of course, uh, uh, our target uh, uh, lesion for DK crush is uh, the distal one, so it's uh, LAD diagonal. Uh, it's Medina 111 uh, with large branches. Uh, it's one single diagonal, so we know that if diagonal is only one, then it always uh, uh, um, it goes to the uh, big territory and supplies more than 10% of myocardium. Uh, long lesion in the LAD and also very important uh, dominant right coronary artery is occluded. So we have to be sure uh, ensure that that uh, both vessels will be open. Uh, so I don't know whether you agree uh, uh, with uh, with my strategy if you, uh, of of um, using two stents yeah, up if, front. Yeah, if we go back. If we go back, I think uh, this is really clear. Uh, go back to the last slide, yeah. to previous slide of Professor. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Uh, I think it's uh, it's really clear indication uh, for uh, upfront plan to stand strategy. Again, uh, like in every case, and like we try to repeatedly say, we should not be dogmatic 
this strategy is the best, the other one uh, cannot be used. I agree, it's two-stand strategy. In this specific case, maybe we could stand LAD first and then do T or TAP stenting. Ideally, T stenting for diagonal. But as you said, single, very diffusely diseased diagonal branch definitely supplies more than 10% of myocardium and needs stenting according to definition two. If I'm right, Shaoliang in definition two, this fulfills criteria of complex lesion and plan two stand strategy provides better clinical outcome. Uh, Shaoliang, what do you think? Yeah, angiographically, congr congratulations. Amache's case is a really, really complex bifurcal yeah. lesion. Single diagonal diffuse lesion. So the diagonal lens, I think, should be longer than 70 centimeter, 70 millimeter. According to Dr. Kuhl's formula, so the territory uh, perfused by diagonal is, will be very, very big. Also, the patient had a CTO in right corner artery. So I think there is no, no doubt about the two step strategy. Also, again, you know, when we uh, perform inside the nest into the first diagonal, even the osteodiagonal looks like not more than 70% diameter stenosis. But I think we cannot trade off with the, the risk and the benefit for this patient. So two step from beginning. Thank and you. And finally, Bea, Bea, to stand strategy up front also in your lab? Yeah, I think so, because this, the, for this patient, this diagonal is really important because the right coronary is totally occluded. So it's, it's, to me, it's clear in this case. Thank you. Machi, please share the, the steps of procedure. Okay, so yeah, so, so we discuss this next, please. Uh, so I started with uh, pre-dilatation uh, with uh, NC balloon, 2.5 balloon uh, over 15. Uh, and uh, after pre-dilatation, I tried to deliver a long 2.5 stent. And perhaps I should, you know, take some lessons from uh, Bea because I didn't use uh, cutting balloon. And you see that I had a, really a huge problem with, uh, with delivering the stent. Uh, this is a radial approach 7 French. Uh, and on the right hand side of the slide, you see that the trick of uh, uh, anchoring uh, a balloon uh, in the LAD and only this maneuver just uh, uh, helped me and uh, allowed me to deliver the, 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 the side branch stent. So uh, it was uh, really a tough lesion. So now you see the implantation on a very, very long 2.5 millimeter uh, 38 uh, stent. Then in the mid part of the slide, that's the primary crush with balloon I have already parked in the, in the vessel. And then what was recommended by Professor Chen a few minutes ago, a proper crush, a crush with properly sized balloon, short balloon in this situation, this is 3.5 NC, NC balloon. Uh, uh, that's the a great image from a visible heart uh, uh, laboratory uh, showing uh, uh, why it is so important to do the proper crush, not only the uh, crushing the stand with the mm, balloon we have in the main vessel, uh, uh, because now you can clearly see that if you crush uh, uh, with the regular balloon, your, your stand will not be crushed at all or partially crushed. Of course, and geographically, you will never notice any difference. Uh, but now look what happens when you get the bigger balloon, when you put a bigger balloon. Uh, and with bigger balloon, you may perform a proper crush uh, that allows your wire to cross uh, not uh, in the mid portion of the stand, but through the struts of the, of the crushed uh, stand. OK. Uh, the next step is you should aim for uh, rewiring a proximal strut. Of course, it's sometimes difficult, but uh, you, you see here in this image that it's possible. So uh, you should try to aim your wire when you're rewiring uh, just um, uh, towards the proximal strut. Uh, and this is another very important uh, part of the procedure because, and this is clearly uh, shown by this great image uh, by John Ormiston um, uh, micro CT, you can clearly see that if you uh, rewire through the distal part of the of the of the 
main vessel stand, then uh, of the side branch stand, then you may uh, get your wire behind the struts uh, of the of the side branch stand, and then with the key sync you will just enlarge this uh, this gap. So it is very important to recross. Yeah, uh, Maciej, can we stop for a second now? I think this is very important aspect. When we say proximal cross, I want to have, if possible, opinion also of Professor Chen. When we cross proximal, we cross, you nicely showed John Ormiston bench in order to avoid the gap. But after the first kissing, so proximal cross for the first kissing, after the first kissing, second time, would you also cross proximally or you cross central distal? Uh, these are at least five or six questions coming whether to cross in both instances in first and second kiss proximally. Oh, thank you, Gora. I think this is a, a biggest question for DK Quash yeah. in terms of the rewiring position. You know, uh, for the first re rewiring, uh, always we recommend from the proxy cell. After standing memory, so two, we always recommend a rewire from proxy cell, but the first proxy cell is different from second proxy cell. So we can imagine after balloon quad, after keys, the previous first cell of side stand disappeared. It becomes the middle cell. So sometimes for for type Y by Fugalian, particularly after first kissing of the standing main vessel, probably there will be a, an easy way to rewire from proxim to middle cell. It depends on the side stand a platform and the side stand size. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think it's very important. Thank you very much for clarifying that. Maciej, uh, there are again questions. Would you consider using imaging in this kind of complex PCI? I didn't have time to answer before, but I think you have some uh, data. Yeah, yeah, of course, uh, we did this procedure. I was guided uh, also, also because we also stented left main. But due to the uh, time, uh, I, I don't show uh, the images and uh, I'm not going to discuss uh, uh, frame by frame. But of course, uh, it's always for complex lesion, especially for the left main, but not only left main. If you have a complex procedure, it's always very useful, very helpful to use the imaging. So definitely, definitely so. Perfect. Next, next slide, please. Okay, go ahead, please. So this is... Uh, 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 crossing the uh, crash stand with balloon. I have uh, already the second balloon in the LED parked to use anchor if needed. But uh, as you can see, if you do the proper crash, it's uh, easier to recross. So, so, so I didn't uh, have to use it. And, uh, this technique, uh, post dilatation, what was also recommended by, uh, by Dr. Chen, a uh, high pressure and uh, kissing with 2.5 and 3.0 short NC, uh, NC balloons. So, so that's the first, uh, that's the first kissing. Uh, then uh, another stand uh, position according to distal reference. So this is 3.0 over 38 long drag diluting uh, stand. Now you see the wire is removed. This is what I do. I, I remove uh, wire mm, before stenting the main vessel. And after main vessel stenting, again, you should do the pots. Otherwise, you may get into trouble. I will show you in the next slide. So this is a POT with 3.5 12 millimeter balloon, high pressure to optimize the uh, position of the mm, struts of the stent to, to the vessel. If you don't do this, it may happen that you will have problems, you will have issues with getting a, a balloon uh, to the side branch, uh, into the side branch again. And this is a very nice demonstration uh, of the uh, DK crash, uh, different case, not that one, uh, circuit and, and marginal branch. When I was not able to deliver balloon into the marginal branch because, and now look at the right hand side of the, of the slide, you can clearly see that the side branch wire got over the main vessel stand, but on a strut, but under the second uh, main vessel strut. So this is why I was not able to deliver the, the balloon. So what do you need, you, you need to do here is just pull back the wire, post dilate with slightly bigger balloon, like 375, for example, and then uh, you'll be ready to, to go and uh, you will have success with, uh, with kissing. This kind of kissing, perhaps not the, not the best one. Uh, 
I would like to protrude a little bit more deeply. Not uh, this, this protrusion, proximal protrusion is not recommended, but if it happens, you should correct the ovality of the vessel with final pot, which is which has been done also in this case. So you see 3.5 balloon uh, over um, uh, over 12 uh, high pressure, uh, 20, 20 atmospheres. Uh, and uh, if you do this, if you do so, uh, if you use um, final post dilatation, you will be able to obtain this great result. So that's another very nice uh, presentation demonstration of uh, how nicely you can cover uh, the all Carina uh, area, uh, distal part of the both branches, as well as uh, the proximal part with this nice round shape uh, in the main vessel. So I think this is these are great Im images from from Minnesota. Uh, showing us uh, how uh, great results or oh, what mistakes you can you can commit uh, during uh, during this kind of the of the procedure uh, and uh, just my last uh, two slides because as you remember from the very beginning it was also the main case in this situation i decided to use uh, provisional uh, so this is um, uh, 3.5 over 24 millimeter dry gluting stent, post dilated again, again, according to IVO's guidance with 508 millimeter uh, short balloon. Uh, um, uh, and that's the, uh, that's the final result. Uh, 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 we decided not to touch uh, the circumflex. Uh, there were no significant lesion. There was a tiny throw uh, free and so we post dilated with really large uh, five zero uh, balloon um, uh, the the whole left main. Okay, yeah, so fantastic. thank you. The final slide of my presentation. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic final result, and we see Ivo's measurement uh, uh, stent areas at all levels are really impressive. Seventeen square millimeters inside left main, really excellent a position. Uh, there are a couple of questions regarding. In this case, it was predominantly osteal LAD, if I correctly remember. Uh, there is a question from Hassan Kadim. Uh, should we use pressure wire to LAD osteum in this case to make sure it's functionally significant or it was uh, very tight already and geographically, so you did not have uh, need to do? Actually, it was That's a borderline. Uh, it was a borderline. It was four zero uh, millimeter square on the IVUS, and you could do this uh, uh, with uh, pressure wire. But there are two tricks in this case. The first one, if you wanted to do this, you, you have to do it after stenting of the uh, distal uh, uh, LAD and diagonal. Yeah. Second thing is that we have occluded uh, right coronary artery. Uh, and uh, so we can expect that uh, in this situation, the FFR would be positive in this borderline lesion. So I decided finally, because main, most, uh, also because of this uh, right CTO, uh, uh, right coronary artery CTO, to stand uh, this borderline uh, stenosis. Yeah, another question, since you already used IVUS from Cyan, uh, do you get influenced by plug burden in distal left main in cases like this? in deciding whether to stand from the left main or try precisely to nail the ostium of the LAD. How frequently you actually precisely try to uh, stand the ostium of the LAD? So there are, there are two or three things. Uh, first, if I, don't, if I don't use IVUS, I never stand the ostial LAD. I always go across the circ. So that, that's my first point, very important. The second thing, if I use IVUS, uh, I see that it very, very rare uh, case uh, that the, the, the plug does not extend towards uh, the left main. In most of cases, you will see some plug in the, in the left main. So um, uh, the procedure, the, the crossing over, uh, stand, the crossover stenting is, uh, is so easy uh, when you protect the, the um, uh, circumflex uh, coronary artery. It should be done in most of cases. So... Uh, I don't see any reason to 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 use just you know to try to 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 be very very precise uh, with you know every move of your of your beating heart is like five millimeters so you can miss the ostium very very easily so it's safer and and very uh, 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 very convenient and uh, uh, for the patient to to stand crossover. Yeah, Bea, what do you what do you think? Uh, uh, would you also uh, try to 
crossover stent or maybe consider LAD osteal stenting uh, trying to uh, mm. avoid metal inside the left main? I think if the left main is really big and you have an open, really open angle, sometimes you can put a an stent and maybe the stent is protruding a little bit. If you have a big left main, it's not an issue. But if the angulation is, is close and the left main is not really big, uh, in my experience, it's not good. And finally, you cross and you left the stand in the middle. That is the worst thing. Yeah. Uh, Shaoliang, anything to add? Uh, would you also consider crossover here? Yeah, I personally, I think precise positioning does not happen for many cases. As Machi said, so I think crossover is a simple way and also very safe. But only difference is that if the left main lens less than five millimeters, so even I was did not find a severe plaque. So I prefer to completely cover the whole lens of left main. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Maybe yeah. One more question. If you stent, uh, if you are stenting crossover from left main to the LAD, you should know what are the expansion capacities of your stents. Yeah, because not every right. three point five stent goes up to four point five and five zero. So that's that's mm. one thing that you have to keep in mind. Yeah, right. exactly. Uh, at this point, uh, what I saw with, is that you did final pot. You did not uh, open struts towards the circ, uh, yeah. and let's help our uh, attendees uh, understand our position. How would you decide whether you will open with balloon circ? And even if there is no angiographic compromise, would you do a pot kiss pot or pot, pot side pot or pot kiss pot? What is your regular practice? And the question was to myself? Yeah, question. Sorry, Machi, to, because procedure is yours. Uh, okay. you, you just did final pot. You did not do kissing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So as you saw, uh, my strategy is to, to stand crossover, go with the large, adequately sized uh, balloon for pot. And if there is no compromise, if the flow is good uh, and stenosis is no more than 70%, then I allow and, and I uh, then I leave it unless there is a very, very large dominant circuit. Then I tend to open the uh, open the, the struts and do the do the kissing. And the second part of your question, in every bifurcation, when there is a large side branch, I try to do the regular kissing with final pot. Uh, only for small side branches, uh, I do pot side pot. So uh, if you ask me for a left main bifurcation, my my answer is if I recross, if I cross towards the side branch and open the strut, then I go for kissing and uh, finalizing with, uh, with final pots. Yeah. Beatrice, what is your uh, uh, strategy? Uh, would you consider doing kissing in every left main also, or depends on angiographic appearance following crossover stenting? In general, more and more I do kissing. In the past, I do a strain across the main branch, and if the flow was good and you don't see pitching, uh, I don't touch. But more and more in left main, I do kissing always now. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I, I agree completely with both of you, but let's listen to Prof Chen. Uh, Shaoliang, uh, in your practice, final kiss, yes or no? Yeah, to be honest, you know, for this left man by Fagalilan, even they perform provisional crossword standing, so the final kissing should be performed in more than 85% of my all cases. The reason are, you know, if we have intravascular imaging, so we can identify the mechanism for the compromise of a single flash. If it's caused by a crying shift, so we can use a small balloon insert, uh, on the other hand, if it's caused by plug shift, we have to use a relative large balloon in the same flash to do kissing balloon inflation. Second reason is that, uh, you know, uh, from many years ago, we tried to follow up the case by uh, OCT. We found some cases after crossing, uh, after 
Kosovo was standing without the kissing balloon inflation. So every one year or even two year follow up patient presented very severe angina. So OCT found there was a floating struts on the orifice of the central flesh. Also, there are some materials on this on this strut. It could be the reason to minimize the space of osteocentral flesh. So I think uh, because I was either beside us. So after standing, after the post dilation, I, I left my standing, so we can check the IOS again. If the main vessel stands cells towards directly towards the osteoma officer, I think probably we don't need to do kissing. Otherwise, we have to use kissing. Thank you. Yeah, this is also integral part, if I may add, of the most recent TBC consensus. Uh, we say if you do uh, imaging, especially OCT, and you see struts across the ostium of the cirque, it's recommended to remove the strut and perform final kissing. So, Bea, any final comments? I really thank you very much for a great case. Any final comments on this webinar? I only, my question to Professor Chen is uh, to optimize the, the, the first uh, side branch when you implant the stem with a balloon, with size of the balloon, and if you use the same balloon to do the kissing. Yeah, exactly, we use the same balloon for kissing. You know, the balloon size for size stem is a one to one ratio. But you know, sometimes, for, for, for example, for this life for men by African leader, they are. It, one or two obtuse marginal taken from sun flats. So this sun flats stand is small. So the balloon for optimization should be one to one to the proximal sir. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Machi, thank you, thank you also for participating. Uh, final comments on this webinar? Yeah, I think that uh, we, we should be aware that, uh, you know, uh, in, in Europe we are uh, in favor of uh, provisional stenting, but there are cases, uh, there are patients, uh, and uh, this seminar uh, showed very nicely uh, when you have to use uh, two stents. And then, of course, uh, there is a choice of what technique you should use. And uh, you, Goran, already mentioned that you should aim for the technique you, re you, you really feel comfortable with and you know the steps and you know how to do this. And the major issue is to do it correctly. So I think this kind of seminar uh, is, a, is, a, is a great uh, way to, to learn um, from, uh, from such an expert like, like Professor Chen. Uh, and uh, I think that this discussion uh, really help uh, our audience, our people, participants in, in, in making decisions uh, during uh, the, uh, daily work. Thank you very much. And thank you also, Professor Chen. It was fantastic to learn from you. Any final words for uh, concluding this? Yeah, actually, I have no more words to conclude our session. But I think my first, first comment is very important. To my surprise, I feel European experts uh, like Mathieu, like Bear, are much more experienced than me. So hopefully, we can meet each other in person in near future to communicate, discuss standing technique for complex by African region. Once again, thank you, Goran, to invite me to join your session. I feel very proud. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, all of you. Can I have my last slide? I would like to really thank all, all of you for excellent presentations. I would like to thank the audience for support and for questions which help us discuss. But I believe after this webinar, we may say that for operators with appropriate experience, DK crash is valuable option for complex left main bifurcation according to definition two study criteria. The key contemporary procedural steps are proximal side branch optimization, sequential crash, proximal side branch recrossing and repeat pot after main vessel stenting and after correctly performed kissing. IVUS or OCT guidance is strongly recommended for optimal procedural result in complex left main bifurcations. I would like to thank all of you, but I would like to thank also Medtronic for kindly supporting this bifurcation continuum. And I hope we will have the opportunity based on your feedback to design next webinar 
on PCR bifurcations. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Keep safe. Nice day. Stay safe. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Thank you my friend. Bye-bye.